Welcome back YouTube to a warm afternoon here in North Texas. It's been a little while since I did a nice video so I'm going to talk about today about something that is very um, confusing and frustrating to me and I'm sure to a lot of people. Keep in mind that I'm not a licensed electrician. I'm just showing you and telling you my experience and what happened when I did it. You can follow your own instructions and I please advise you to talk to an electrician. But here's something that I've been really fussed at and, and mold over my in my brain. So, all right. A lot of people have commented about my grounds. So here I've got grounds and I wanted to show you my grounds. So I have a wire going from the ground here to the chassis, to the frame. I have a wire going from the inverter to ground like I'm supposed to because there's a post back here that has the ground attached. I also have the grounds from the 110 going down to the frame as well. So with all the grounds attached, I'm running on solar right now. And I use an electrical tester. And the electrical tester, both if, if it's grounded correctly and everything is right, this is supposed to be lit. Well, everything's hooked up correctly because all of my solar works, but it's still showing an open ground. Now I'm gonna change it over to, to shore power. I unplug from my solar inverter. All right, there's the ground for the solar inverter right here. I took the plugs and I plugged them into shore power. So now we're on shore power, 110 volts shore power. And I come over here to my tester and now we are grounded. All right? So I'm gonna turn it back to solar to show you. And as you can see, I unplugged it from my 110 and put it back into solar. So now I'm getting 110 volts out of the solar inverter. And we come back to our tester and it's showing open ground. So here's my deal. All right. I've got the grounds in like I've been advised to do and, I, and I'm perfectly happy. It won't hurt anything to have those grounds in there. But with that thing showing me open ground, it doesn't make me feel any more comfortable. It doesn't. The fact is that this trailer on solar is not grounded to the ground because it's got tires and the tires are insulating it from the ground. I'm not putting a rod in the ground and to ground it to the ground, and I don't think anybody else is either. So, I, you know, I admit I am a layman at this. I am not a licensed electrician, but it's just interesting to me how licensed electricians can all agree on this stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, we all have our opinions, but Apparently, licensed electricians argue about this stuff, too. So, I've got multiple grounds here, as I've been advised to do, and, and I don't mind having them on there. But how do you get that meter to show a good ground when you're on solar power? Because a mistake could be fatal. And obviously, it's not going to show a ground because I'm not attached to the ground. So my solar power, I'm not sorry, my shore power is, and I've got good ground through shore power, but not through solar power. This is an interesting argument to me, an interesting observation. I don't know the solution to this other than having a ground pole in the ground everywhere you camp. Anyway, if you uh, learn something if you want to share it if you want to comment nice comments are always welcome if you're going to cuss at me i'm probably going to press the delete button but i'll sure be glad to debate with you or discuss with you or learn from you i'm more than happy to learn from you i do not know everything but i am hearing a lot of arguments back and forth on grounds and sure i'm, I'm up for it i want to hear more so uh thank you for watching i appreciate your time and i appreciate your kind comments and constructive criticism and if you like what you see, please share, please like, please, please subscribe. I'll keep trying to learn more and keep trying to share more as I learn more. Y'all have a good day and I'll see you out on the road soon.